you know, it's kind of a perfect play. There's not a spare word in the play, and, and yet it, it gets across exactly what he's trying to get across. And, you know, I think it's interesting that we're doing it at this time. As Dan mentioned, the last time it was done, it's right at that real estate bubble, right at that bubble time. And it's fascinating that it wasn't done before then for, since it opened, you know, so what came between then? Pretty good times, you know. Um, the play was never done in New York during the Clinton years, and here it was being done again during the Bush administration and now being done tough times as well. And so I think the play will resonate a lot. Uh, and as far as working with this group, you know, it's, you know, it's like a dream come true. I mean, I had this guy's posters all over my walls, so, you know. <laughs> I was surprised at how uh, on the page it feels like some kind of Bach, uh, you know, concerto or something. It feels really musical. And, and we're just kind of stumbling around, nobody really knows what they're doing, I think. What we do when we work on David Mamet or, or even Shakespeare, you, 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 you take the time during the rehearsal period to improvise, to, to try to find your way into the, uh, into the syntax of the words. I, mean, I think we all know why, you know, the salesman's a great American archetype, and I think David recognized that, and it sort of keeps it, it makes, that, it, makes it timeless. It feels like an opera. That you're inside an opera right now, and we have seven instruments playing, um, you know, the 49 instruments of a symphony, and we kind of have to figure out, you know, where where the music is and what instrument we're playing at a particular time. The play takes place in 1983, so you know, like before we before we were constantly inside of a machine, you know, um, all the time, you know, we could get our information here, and these are guys who sort of have to survive on their own on their own use of language. Everyone, it's all, it's, I guess it's a jazz symphony. Everyone is just popping in, and that contributes to the, to the music of it. And it's, it's a responsibility, and it's also quite phenomenal. It's the power of language, this play. And everybody in this play is selling something. And so, you know, they have to be deceptive to each other face to face, um, which we don't do a lot anymore. You know, we now get out of things by sending an email or sending a text, and we could be really funny in a text, even though we're not funny in real life. You, we're used to styling these kind of plays. At, 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 at first, you think it's naturalism, but it isn't. It's uh, it's not naturalism, and that's the that that that, that the, the dialect is is different. It's its own thing. It's a survival play. Everybody in this play is trying to survive with as economical a language, with, with as few words as possible, really. Someone told me that the, uh, only two plays have ever won the, the Pulitzer, the Olivier, and the Tony all, and it's uh, Clybourne Park and, and Glengarry Glen Ross. Uh -huh. They're the only two plays. That, and so I've just decided those are the only plays that I'll do that, that, have, <laughs> that have won that, the, those three awards. Triple crowns. <clears throat> Triple crowns, so.